A lot of people have been having trouble with a couple of installers for Fallout 2 mods, specifically Oblivion Lost and Fallout Nevada. Now, the extended edition of the Nevada mod is one I've been working on the translation for for a little bit, and this one I've had specific requests to cover. These installers make use of a little-known technique for separating mods that has been championed by Lex, one of the bigger name modders on NMA. This technique has you installing the mod to a new folder inside the Fallout 2 directory, but editing the Fallout2.cfg config file to point to the newly installed mod instead of the default game path. This is kind of cool because mods used to be installed directly over the original game files, meaning if you wanted to play the vanilla game again or install a different mod, you'd have to completely reinstall the entire game. And that's how I've been doing it most of the time. But with this, you can install multiple mods in the same Fallout 2 game folder, and this method will avoid conflicting files or overwriting each other. On the other hand, the way these installers implement this technique can be pretty confusing. So let's go over how this works for all you new Fallout 2 modders. I will be demonstrating this with Fallout Nevada's installer, but the same steps apply to Oblivion Lost's installer. With the exception that Oblivion Lost comes with one extra mod. Alright, so the first thing that pops up is the little setup warning screen. Fallout Nevada and Oblivion Lost Installer both have two modes to choose from. An unnamed default mode that installs the game into a subfolder, like I've been describing, or as Lex Champions, and root directory mode that installs over the original game files. This pop-up warning message tries to explain how to change this setting, but it isn't as explicitly clear as it could be. What it says is, default installation goes into a subfolder, doesn't overwrite the game. Example, x slash game slash fallout 2 slash nevada mod extended. When installing to the root folder of the game, change the installation path and select checkbox root directory mode. Scroll lock to change the language encoding. We shouldn't really have to worry about the scroll lock, but the root directory mode is particularly important here. So click OK here and the welcome panel will show up. Click Next here for obvious reasons, there's nothing we can do on this page. Here's the license, don't sue me, don't sue them either, it's just a mod. Click Next. Now the destination folder screen here is important, but it's not immediately obvious why until you get through two more screens. One thing to remember when installing mods is don't install Fallout or Fallout 2 to the Programs folder. If you've got Windows and Steam or GOG are installing games to the Programs folder, you'll have to manually change this for Fallout 2. The reason has something to do with how Windows restricts access to its protected folders, quote unquote, but this isn't a video about Microsoft's terrible design decisions. Just change the install folder to something outside of the Windows main folders and you should be good to go. By default, this folder points to C slash games, but I'm going to browse to my Steam directory where I have a specific Fallout 2 folder created just for this. There we go. And once you've selected the install folder for your copy of Fallout 2, pay attention to the folder it asks you to create here and scroll to the right and you'll notice that it says Nevada Bot Extended right inside here. Uh, there's a reason for this and I'm going to show you why in just a second. Click next and we'll come back to this in a second. It'll ask you if you want this folder to be created. Click yes for now. This is non-root directory mode and I will show you the difference in just a second. The component select screen allows you to switch between languages and set a couple of modifier options in the ddraw.ini config file. Obviously, I don't want Russian, I want English. There we go. You can change the game speed in game as long as you have control of the player character. I've got a short video up describing how to do this, link in the description, but this just sets the default start speed. 1.5 is fine, choose the higher or lower, depending on what you like. It's definitely worth checking out in my opinion. Other than that, and the obvious skip intros option, click next. And here is where you finally get to select root directory mode. Now notice this little note next to the root directory option, go back and change the installation path. What this means is if you check this box, then you'll have to click back twice and manually alter the installation directory the installer created for you earlier. And remove this. If you want these mods installed in the root directory, which is more compatible on some operating systems, then you'll have to remove the last folder name on here, the Nevada mod extended part. Why this change wasn't built into the installer itself, I have no idea, but I'll install it both ways to show you how they work. Let's start with root directory mode. Once you have the root directory mode box checked, click back twice, remove this Nevada mod folder, and select next. And yes, to install it to the Fallout 2 directory that already exists and next through the components screen. And I'll explain all these extra options in a second when I install it using the default subfolder method. So click next for now and click install here. Once the installer finishes, open the game folder and run nevada.exe or use the created shortcut and run that. 
By default, it will pop up with a configurator. I highly recommend using it at least to get yourself set up initially. And I recommend windowed and scaling times two when starting up, but there is more configurations you should do once you have this running. Hit done here, hit finish here. And if you open up your game folder, you'll find nevada.exe and nevada resconfig.exe right here. I would rerun nevada resconfig.exe and hit manually edit config, which will open up the config file here. And there is there are a couple of changes I would make. One specifically is down here in windowed full screen, change that to one, and extra win message checks right here, change that to one. File, save, and there you go. That's all you really gotta do. Now you can run nevadahd.exe, and now you can play the game like you want. If you want to change other screen settings, you can go in here and change them there. Okay, that's how you do a root directory install. So next, let's look at the default subdirectory install and I'll explain some of those extras. This time we'll just hit next until we get to the destination folder screen. Choose your correct Fallout 2 game folder, making sure it's not installed in any Windows directories again, and click yes when asked if you want to create this folder. Select your preferred language, again, English for me, and this time we'll leave root directory mode unchecked. And now real quick, hopefully real quick, here's what the rest of these options are about. Run SVault Configurator after installation. The SVault Configurator is a complicated looking tool that does nothing more than provide a graphical interface for the ddraw.ini config file. For the most part, you can just leave these settings as default and the game should run fine. But it's kind of nice to take a look at what options you have available for your game through the SVault mod. The Appearance mod. The Hero Appearance mod gives you extra options for your character's appearance. For some reason, they don't show up correctly in my install of Fallout Nevada Extended, but here's what they look like in Oblivion Lost. The Inventory Filter plugin allows you to sort your inventory before browsing through it looking for an item. This makes it significantly easier and less time consuming to find something in your inventory because this filters your inventory by item types, which you can adjust in the inventfilter.ini config file located under the mods slash inventory filter.dat folder. This next one down is the keys mod, which alters the save load, quick save, quick load keys to something more modern. Binding the save and quick save keys on F4 and F5 respectively, and load and quick load to F8 and F9. I find this is helpful for anybody who's coming from one of the more modern games like Divinity Original Sin, but if you're used to the default key binds for Fallout 2, like I am, then you want to leave this unchecked because it gets kind of confusing otherwise. The Open and Pass Unlocked Doors mod, this one just allows you to run through unlocked doors without having to manually open each and every one. Real time saver this one, definitely recommend. Unfortunately, this setting doesn't work correctly in the Nevada installer, so you'll have to manually enable it in the svalmods.ini configuration file located in the same folder as the nevadahd.exe executable. The Auto Close Open Containers mod, this last one just closes every single container you open, including the doors, I think, which can get a little annoying if you want to skip the opening animation each time you use a container. But since the Item Highlight mod also highlights containers these days and color codes whether the container has anything in it or whether you've checked it or not, at least in this mod, after you've checked it once, you won't have to check if container is empty or not again. These two mods marked other do exactly what they say and aren't necessary, though portable can be useful if you're installing the game on a thumb drive for some reason. And the one option not included with the Nevada mod that is included with the Bolivian Lost installer is the Party Orders add-on mod. This mod allows you to give your party members a few specific orders on the fly, and I'll have a link to the mod page on NMA in the description with all the default key binds for anyone who wants to try this one out. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get this working in the Oblivion mod. And since this is a pretty buggy mod anyway, I'll just assume it's broken and needs a newer version to get it working. If anybody watching knows how to get this working, please let me know in a comment. Okay, all done here. Then let's click the next button and install this mod in what I guess should be called subfolder mode. Anyway, make sure you create a desktop icon and click install here. Sometimes, for some reason, when this installer installs the mod in subfolder mode, it won't find the executable in the correct folder because it's looking in the wrong spot. Uh, you can just click done here and we'll, I'll show you how to run that manually. 
hit done here, hit finish here, and just run the game. Anyway, make sure you create a desktop icon for this from the installer, but if you miss that step, then just open the Fallout 2 folder you installed the mod to, and you should find a Nevada mod or Oblivion Lost folder inside, depending on which mod you're installing. In this folder, you'll find all the mod files and the executable you're supposed to run. Nevada HD.exe for Fallout Nevada, and the regular Fallout2.exe for Oblivion Lost. Now, if you want to rerun Nevada Resconfig.exe, run it from here. It should, but obviously it doesn't find the Nevada HD executable, but that's not a big deal. Just set your configuration how you want it. Click done here, rerun it one more time, click manually edit config, and go down and make sure you have windowed full screen and when message checks set to one and save that and you should be good to go whatever else you do. Just run that shortcut and voila, there we go. Similarly for Oblivion Loss, you will have f 2 resconfigexe This one of course does find things correctly. Uh, make sure everything is configured correctly for your system here and hit manually edit config there and make sure that your windowed full screen mode is set to one and your extra win message checks is set to one as well. Save that. And you can run fallout2.exe here or create a shortcut however you see fit. Fair warning though, you will have to run this one twice because the DLL it loads up somehow doesn't automatically load the game itself. I don't know why it's some sort of a weird bug with some of these older mods. Okay, that's about all there is to that. Just be careful which mode you install with. And if you want to change configuration settings in subfolder mode, make sure to run Nevada Res Config EXE inside the Nevada subfolder or F2 Res Config .exe in the Oblivion Loss subfolder. Because the F2 Res Config .exe in the root subfolder won't work in subfolder mode. It actually will only work on the vanilla game itself, which you can still run just by opening that up right there. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you guys have fun playing either or both of these two mods.